Hey there everyone, Hitesh here and welcome to another video of the Golang series. I hope you are having a chill out day or night whenever you're watching this one. So let's go ahead and talk about URLs. URLs are the key essential part whenever you're handling anything related to web. In the last video, we saw that how we can make a request to a URL, but there are often time that comes in when you need to actually grab some information from the URL, especially the parameters. And no matter what library or package you're using, GoFiber or something else, you probably need to grab something from the URL. Of course, those libraries or package allows you to do that much more easier way, but you should really know how to deal up with that uh, using the simplest of the package, which comes up by default with the net library. This net is not just a library, it's actually a module, which is really big. And inside that we have small pieces of code, uh, like we saw in the last video one about the HTTP method and URL is also one of them. So let's go ahead and talk less and write more code because it's much more easier to understand in the code perspective. Okay, so we need to create a new folder, obviously. We're going to go ahead and say this is 20 and we're going to have URLs. Okay, so this is what we got. And let's create a new file into this one, obviously main.go. And don't worry, the module folder or the module uh, video is very soon, it's very near, uh, so that we don't have to always create main.go and if we create these into multiple folders, what happens, we will eventually explore that. Don't you worry on that part. So package is obviously main. We have a function which obviously again is main and we want to construct a URL first. First, but before that, fumpt is really, really important. So we're going to say, uh, welcome to handling URLs in Golang. Yeah, that sounds nice. Okay, once we are done with that, let's go ahead and construct a fictitious URL. Uh, we'll go both way around. So first we are gonna create a fictitious URL and we'll try to extract information from it. And then we're going to try to uh, create information and then try to create a URL from it. So we are taking it down from both way. So let's call this one as my URL. Feel free to call it anything. It will be of type string. So let's go ahead and construct this one https colon slash slash lco dot dev and maybe you are working on some aws or cloud and you have specific port number being issued to you as well uh, so we're going to take it down both in case you don't have you can ignore that information but if you have we are going to see that how we can uh, take that so we're going to have a slash learn which is my favorite url we tend to deploy everything up here and then we have some of the queries as well for example there is a course name so let's go ahead and say uh, the course name is react js okay and uh, you can use an ampersand sign and based on the ampersand like this is kind of a comma in the world of url you can have more something like uh, payment id which is going to be equal to some gibberish value with some keys yeah something like that so this is the basics of it that we have. We don't need any equals or double quotes or anything further down. This is the basic URL syntax. If you'll visit any website, common syntax, we have some base domain, some of the protocols, uh, pro some of the port numbers, and then we have some slash subdomains or something like that. Not subdomains, some uh, subdirectories there. And then we have course name equals react.js and payment ID and something and something. So this is the basic structure of URL. Shouldn't be discussed in that much detail, but yeah, now you know that. Okay, so let's go ahead and print this URL so that we can see that, yeah, I can actually access that. That is the start of it. Let's go ahead and open this up into integrated terminal. You're quite familiar of these stuff by now. We didn't even initialize the mod. So let's go ahead and say mod init. And let's call this as LCO URL web, yeah, something like that. And we're going to say go run main.go. And okay, that is fine that we are able to grab all the URLs, so that is nice. Somehow we are grabbing it. But most importantly, you will actually be parsing the URL. And what does this parsing mean? Uh, parsing simply means you want to extract some information, not the literal meaning, <laughs> the context of here, here uh, what I want to say is something like this. So we have a library, just like the .NET has HTTP library, we have a URL library as well, and we can go ahead and parse any URL into this. Now, as soon as you parse on any URL, you'll be receiving a result. This result has so much of information to explore. So we're gonna say result, or maybe your URL is 
malformed or something wrong is there so you can go ahead and receive an error there now obviously in the majority of the cases i'll go for something like this error and then comma okay syntax but since we have explored this pretty nicely i'm pretty sure you can do this on your own i'm gonna just uh, ignore the error in this case let's go ahead and see what we can do with this so we're gonna go ahead and directly use this result so let's go ahead and say res result come on there we go so now we have this result uh, looks like there is some issue did we exp yeah we got this one but this one here now remember this result I told you it contains so much of the information and we need to figure out that how we can extract some of the information the first information is actually scheme and looks like you are having some of the issue let me quickly go ahead and check this one okay it was pretty easy to debug <laughs> my bad I actually forgot this colon yeah super easy to miss but we got the point so now this result is having so much of information. The first thing we are going to extract from it is the scheme. And I'll walk you through with the documentation as well. Don't you worry on that part. If I go ahead and run this, notice it says HTTPS because some of the schemes are like MongoDB colon slash slash and SRVs and all of that. So it has to do a lot with it. And that's why we have this scheme. But there are a couple of more options that we can explore. Let's go ahead and see that. Apart from scheme, uh, you can also go ahead and extract host. And interestingly, you can also go ahead and have path and let's go up there and we can also go ahead and say there is a raw query. And by the way, just one more, uh, there is also a port, but it is not a, a property. It is actually a method. So keep an eye on that. <laughs> Very easy to miss. Let's go ahead and save this and try to run all of that. So we see that the scheme is HTTPS and the host is lco.dev since we have a colon port number as well that also came in and the slash learn is the path. So remember slash learn slash login, whatever there is, you can go ahead and use that. And then the port we got, which is 3000, obviously. And then we have got this raw query. In this raw query, all the queries that are being passed to you, which are also known as to JavaScript developers as params, parameters, whatever the language you work on with, they all are being grabbed in this case. Now, obviously the thing that makes a lot of sense for you that, uh, hey, I want to just grab all of these elements as individuals so that maybe I can perform more operation on that. Yes, we will come on that, don't you worry. Okay, so this is all uh, being done. Now let's go ahead and work on with that for the query params. Now you can definitely go ahead and store this entirety of the thing into a variable. And that obviously is the first instinct to do it. You can in technically, uh, but there is a better way of doing it. So let's call this one as Q params, params, query parameters, short for that. There is a little bit of the better information uh, that you can do or better uh, method that you can use, which is dot query. Dot query actually just stores all these query parameters into a better format. Let me show you that. Less talking, more code. <laughs> okay. So we're going to go ahead and say font and we're going to say the type of query params are and let's use our favorite percent capital T with a slash and we won't forget this time and let's see what the data type of this Q params is and why are you having some of the issues uh, print ln my bad print f should be all happy. Now let's go ahead and see that. And by the way, I'm going to go ahead and comment out all of this uh, because it's too much of the information right now being dumped out. And as you can see, this says uh, the query params are of type URL dot values. Now don't get a strange look with this URL values. These are basically key value pairs and they have a fancy name of calling them as a URL dot values. And once you get the information that they are of URL values, that means they are key values types. So I can do pretty much anything and everything that I know about uh, the dictionaries, the key and value, which we have already explored in the Golang. So let's go ahead and have some fun with that. Uh, so first thing that I'm going to do is fumped print and this Q params. I know that if it is key and value, I can pass on a key and extract that information. For example, the key is course name. And by the way, all the keys and values are in the string string format. So no worries on that so go ahead and if i try to run this information i get this uh, react js as the value of it uh, so that's pretty much easy go ahead and try to find out that how can i extract this payment id i'm pretty sure that's a repetition but you can go ahead and do that not only that 
since this is now key value pair, I can use my for loop and the range keyword to just iterate through over it. So I'm gonna go ahead and say, I want to use the for loop and I'm not worried about the index that is coming up. All I'm worried about is the value that is coming in. And I can use a range keyword for this Q params, just like that. And we won't be doing much, just the fumt. And let's go ahead and say params is or r param is that makes sense okay and we are going to just dump out the value in this case at least okay let's go ahead and run this one more time and there we go we see that the all the values of the params are coming in obviously the order is not guaranteed because they are key value pairs it is never guaranteed in this kind of data type Okay, so this is all basics of it. Now, moving into the reverse direction is super easy. Maybe you have all the information in the chunks or parts and you want to construct a URL out of it. Super easy to go ahead and work on with that. Uh, in fact, you don't need any URL library for that. Uh, that is super easy. You can just create a, all of that. But just in case, because this is an essential part, uh, I just want to have it. So let's call it as parts of URL. And in that case, it makes sense that all of these parts of URL goes in. And in this case, remember, this is a very essential thing. Please don't skip this part. You always pass on a reference in this case. You don't want to pass on a copy of this one. You want to pass on a reference of URL.URL. So you will be passing on like this, and there we go. Now there are special uh, parameters that you have to define. And remember, these properties are not like you cannot name them anything. They have to be precisely this way. So scheme needs to be called a scheme exactly like this. In my case, the scheme is HTTPS. There we go. No colon, no slash slash. This is how it is going to work. And after that, there is a host. And the host is going to be, let's just say, lco.dev. And once the scheme is there, host is there, there is a path that we need to construct optionally. In my case, it is slash learn. And by the way, there is also a path here, tute. Uh, CSS, let me go ahead and say that, nice and easy. And then probably in case you have some of the raw query, you can go ahead and mention that. Let's just say, this will say user equals Hitesh. So there we go. Now, most importantly, remember, you have to pass on a reference URL.URL, it always takes works like that. And once you have this parts of URL done, then you can just go ahead and construct a string out of it or a URL out of it. Let's call this one as another URL and that will be constructed from parts of URL. And all you have to go to do is just go ahead and use a string of that. That's it. And let's print that out. Fumped another URL. I know this is a little bit of the weird syntax. We haven't seen this one, but yeah, this is also another way of handling the string. You can also uh, go ahead and put that into a string, but in this case, yeah, this is another way. <laughs> no big deal. And remember, most forgotten, and at least when I was working in a project in the Golang, I always used to forget this M percent. Somehow, strange reasons. Let's go ahead and run this one. And as you see at the very bottom, we see all of this. You can hit Control and click on this, and it will open up in the URL. And this will open up the Tute CSS, another side fun project I have been working out. Uh, we'll get some time to finish it up, hopefully in the near future. But that's it. That's all about handling the URL as well as constructing the URLs. And now you have all the information that you're probably going to need while working in the backend. Let's go ahead and catch up in next video.